All right, I'm going to call this uh, Tuesday, May 3rd, budget workshop to order. <laughs> and Alan, you're first off, I think. Maybe last off. <laughs> so we've all prepared all our budget questions for the last three weeks, and you get to be. <laughs> Not a problem. I can defer everything to Bruce. Mayor, Council, thanks for the opportunity to present my budget. And I appreciate the ability to be able to be flexible to be moving it this week due to a conflict last week. Um, I'll keep it pretty simple. Um, from from the budget standpoint, under fire, we uh, under benefits and salaries or personnel, we had uh, asked for three personnel. We talked about that during the retreat, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Under maintenance and operation, we basically cut that budget um, by 19850 and that looks like it was a really good deal, but what happened was we had some radio upgrades last year, some station um, equipment upgrade that was married into our communications budget. So those were completed and moved forward, so we were able to cut that amount out, and it was um, around 30000 So technically what happened was with that getting cut out, the stuff that we had to increase, like uniforms and supplies and some of our software and insurance, stuff like that, it ended up eating that cost, and we still come out 19000 to the good. Um, under capital outlay, we had a uh, small increase of uh, 43000 and that's mainly what you'll see there is um, some upgrades to air packs um, that we had to do. The 10 years they is the lifespan on a SCBA, which we wear for fires. So we're starting to phase those out um, as, the, as they come up. So we'll be buying those in small pockets. And then, of course, the new equipment that we're getting or a new apparatus, there's some equipment we'll move over. There's some equipment that's just aged out. You know, it's a 21-year, 22-year-old vehicle. So, you know, an ax is an ax, but fire hose is wore out after that many years. So there's some equipment that we'll have to do some upgrade to. Um, kind of to back up to personnel benefits, um, we talked about this in the retreat just a little bit, and, you know, the main thing I wanted you guys to see is how we've had um, a steady increase in call volume. And I went back to 1995 where we were only running 76 calls on the island, and fast forward to 2021, we ran 10 or 1,029 calls. And probably one of the things that jumps out the most to me is that we started watching our overlapping calls. So. It, Last year, we had 135 calls that were overlapping each other, which meant we run a single engine right now with paid personnel. Once they're committed on a call, there was 135 times last year that we had to rely on either volunteers being back or neighboring departments to answer those emergencies for us. Um, 2022, we're already seeing, let me back up, 2021 was our busiest year on record, obviously. Uh, 2022, we're already 20 calls ahead of that. Um, so we're, see, we're going to see a, a drastic increase, and we still haven't even added back in. They took out all breathing difficulty calls during COVID. They're talking about June, July when they're bringing those back to fire responding to them. We were trying to limit the exposure to all the first responders, so there were certain calls that only the ambulance went to that we normally would get there first and help. So those calls will be coming back, and, and that number is just waiting to be seen. But it's probably going to be 100 plus calls a year that be added back to um, the, our call volume. So we'll see that happening. And this year alone, we've already seen 14 times that we had calls overlapping each other. So this really drives the need to right now we're running one engine with four personnel. And safely, you need to have three per people on one apparatus to respond and function. So what we're proposing this year is to add three personnel to, to the shift side that allow us to go we'll drop the three on the engine and then go two on the ladder truck to allow us to one get the ladder out and we saw what happened you know um, good friday a year ago with how fast those fires progress on us so getting that ladder truck there quickly is key for us in, as the town continues to get larger and bigger with buildings so we'll be running three on an engine and two on the ladder and um just to go ahead and put it out there, um, as I'm begging for three now, um, in the near future, we're going to need to be adding three more so that we can get that three and three so that that company, that ladder company, can function it 
independently. Right now, it's going to require steel personnel to get on and help with that. And industry standard is actually four personnel per apparatus. That's what most cities strive to meet. So right now, we're eating it, that elephant a bite at a time. And we just we see the need to be able to get both those pieces of equipment out. And then in the near future, be able to at least minimally staff those with three per, per apparatus. So, um, Chief, before you go to that one, can you? Uh, I think everyone in this room probably understands this, but for the public that may be watching, I'm not sure a lot of citizens realize the types of calls that fire services. It's a lot more than just fires. Can you just a short statement of the types of calls you guys answer? It's uh, it, we have a running joke that when you call 911, if they can't find an agency to give it to, it gets given to fire, right? So, um, and that's not a running joke because yesterday morning we got a call for a lift assist for an animal that was trying to go to the vet. So we sent the guys out and they helped this lady um, actually load their pet into the vehicle. But the short of it is we do everything from fire, obviously, uh, fire alarms, car wrecks. Uh, we run medical calls, which we don't, we don't run every medical. It's only what we call uh, Delta Echoes, which is your more serious um, um, needs intervention pretty quickly. Obviously, ocean rescue, water rescue, we had the fire boat. Um, and then, of course, all the service calls from hazardous materials to um, brush fires, woods fires, dumpster fires. And um, so we see, you know, it, it's July 4th last year, I think the guys started out with a water rescue early in the morning, like 9 o'clock, um, was on the fire boat at like 11 on a boater in distress, and then was had a fire alarm at like Atlantic Towers. So. I tell people we went from a medical to riding a fire boat to on a high rise or a mid rise operation um, all within, you know, by 10 o'clock that morning and the same crew was doing it off one engine and that's where in a beach town that's um, very diverse like ours from residential to uh, mid rise hotels and then the beach, it's a lot for those four personnel. They're really scrambling to stay up with everything. Chief, does this do anything for your, I guess, day, a, a weekly, um, I'd say battle rhythm, but what it amounts to is what are the expectations today without the additional three, and then with the additional three in terms of a workload, four on, three off, 12-hour shifts? It's 24-hour shifts. So, um, and what we do is kind of share the call load a little bit between them. The, once we get the new rescue truck that we've ordered, the ladder truck will actually, those guys will be moving back and forth between. So if it's a true rescue call, they would go over, and that would be for vehicle accidents and stuff like that, um, or any type of technical type rescue stuff. They, those guys would float back and forth, or that personnel would. And then, of course, most of our responses require a dual response. So by so, if it's a fire alarm or a, anything that involves a structure that would be on fire, we're supposed to be rolling both those apparatus, and we have a basically a timetable we have to respond those in. So this is going to be an improvement towards our ISO score in the future. We're currently in ISO 2, which is very aggressive for a town this size. Um, that would help us solidify that score and could, you know, I don't want to make promises it would, it would improve it, but I think before we get reevaluated, if we're running these personnel like there's, we, we're trying to get this set up to run, it's going to greatly enhance our score with ISO. And the better the score, the better your fire insurance is so the, the taxpayer is safe. And with the, with the proposed, um, with your proposal here, Chief, impacts to the ability to get out through the inlet on a rescue, open ocean rescue, that's, that remains unchanged? It, it, yes. The, it, the, the only enhancement to that side of it is, is when that engine is committed on the, is committed on the boat, we still got a crew at the station. And, a lot of times that's where our overlapping calls are happening in the summer. We've got multiple water rescues going on or we may have boat calls going on and then we get a medical or a fire alarm and this is where we're actually scrambling because once that crew moves over to the boat, they're kind of committed and, and there is no uncommitting until they can get back to the docks and get off the boat. So this is where that side of the house is really going to get enhanced because we'll, we'll have a crew back that, that still protect the island while we're still protecting the ones that are in 911 need at this time. Chief, how many volunteers do we currently have in the fire department? 15 is a round number. 
um, that can go up and go down it just you know sporadically and you know the the challenge we're seeing is a lot of our volunteers we had an older good group of volunteers when I came here that group kind of aged out or nutrition it's a better word um, we've got a younger generation of volunteers that came on but they all have full-time jobs and to ask them you know to, to run during the day or even run it four in the morning when they know they got to be up at six to go to work that's where we're struggling you know if we see a fire we're seeing a good response back if it's just a fire alarm at two in the morning we may not get many volunteers back and that's understood I mean last question for me that you've got a a standard by you're supposed to try to achieve in terms of response from bell to arrival on scene have you noticed trends in a negative way where you've been unable to meet those established standards whether they're you know fire departments you know carolina beach standards or or so or osha or statewide so there's nfpa 1710 is what we respond to it's the response um kind of matrix that you go by and that's where you get the three personnel minimum the state says you need to have four on scene within so many minutes so even though we're we're running four right now and we get those on scene but they also say you should have this type of apparatus arriving within a certain amount of time so that 1710 standard that we follow um, that that matrix talks about what three personnel looks like what four looks like and then the timeless the, the how, how timely we get them there so th this is going to help us meet a part of that where, where we've struggled meeting it you got to meet it 90 percent of the time and where we're struggling is when the guys are on one call and another one comes in and they're saying we should be on scene within four minutes and we're not able to um, because they might be over at, at alabama and get a call at freeman park so such a spread and they're already committed on one call they have to finish up what they're doing and then it might be we call Curry Beach if they're available in the summer they're just as busy as us or station 19 over the bridge but in the county but they're they're now uh, engine 18 which is at the monkey junction that's the busiest engine in the whole county so every time they're out 19's with them so what we're seeing is everybody's call volume has exploded so the mutual aid that we've always relied on they're just as busy as us so it, it's getting hard to pull from those pools as, as much as we used to. I have a question. <clears throat> um, capital outlay, is there something I'm missing in the budget here? I expect there is. Surely you're paying down for some fire trucks or something. Is that in a, a different part that, of the budget? That was in the uh, Debbie's presentation. Yeah. That's in our debt service? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> which would be my the, the building, um, our current engine, and the last debt service was this year, I think the fire boat and it went away, and then we have two new debt services that were, are coming on this year. We good to move to Ocean. Can you tell me a little more about the ISO score, briefly? Okay, um, that's pretty broad. <laughs> uh, so, Basically, ISO ranks a fire department from 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. If you're a 10, you basically are 9 supervised. You go 9S. If you go 10, they shut you down. Um, at the state will shut you down and give your district to another department. So obviously, as you tear down to 1, that is the best score you can get. We're an ISO 2, and the last time I looked, uh, I, I hate to say a percentage, maybe we're in the – 15 to 20 percent range in the nation mm -hmm. of fire departments that even are in a two or better so um you know we're we're pretty you look at how many fire departments they are and in north carolina you're only talking a handful of iso twos um throughout the state out of the um you know thousands of fire departments that they have and then my understanding is that score directly affects our homeowners insurance rates it does to a, to a certain score it affects homeowners and then when you get down into your one twos and lower numbers um it's commercial it's more commercial benefits okay but at the end of the day when you've got a developer looking at property there's a huge savings where we were five several years ago we dropped to a three and oh nine or ten and then we just dropped to a two 
So uh, we've continually improved since the mid 2000s on that score. So, so these three additional personnel will not only help in safety, but it's a possibility we could be in ISO one. Man, I'd hate to commit to that. <laughs> <laughs> when we, I'll be honest with you, when we didn't get one this year, I wasn't upset because I was worried to maintain that because we 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 were a strong two. We would have been a really weak one, which would have been scary. And, and a lot of that ties to your water system and your training and then your personnel. And with volunteers, the training matrix they use, it's like, you know, 240 hours a year they have to get to get max points for us. So to ask a volunteer to respond to all these calls. And so, but what we do see is we, we hold that requirement to the, to the paid staff and we encourage the volunteers. And then on the, on the, on the uh, water side, I think by the time we get graded again, we're going to see a lot better score in that water system mm -hmm. than what we saw this time. So. Well, the good news is if, we give it, if, if you get the personnel and you don't get it, I don't, I don't think we're taking them away. Right. <laughs> right. Oh. Proximity is going to. All right, so Ocean Rescue is, uh, I mean, just in a nutshell, the increase in salaries was us bringing the guards up to uh, $15 an hour, which is what every beach around us just did. PR with our group, returners, like sending emails saying, just stay with us, be, be confident, because we're starting out at like 1250 or something. So they jumped the 15 on us immediately. So what we're looking to do is increase them July 1 to $15 an hour. So that's reflective in that budget there. And the maintenance and operation, we actually was a decrease by 1,000. And some of that was because of some rentals and stuff that we were doing last year to get us through to this that we could cut out. We pretty much flatlined the budget where it was at. Um, capital outlay, there was addition 5,000, but that's, that's to buy more radios. We're, we're hurting on radios, so we're, we bought some last year. We're going to buy a little bit more this year. Next year, we'll, we'll cap that out. We'll be replaced all of our portable radios for the lifeguard stands. And then a, the, the other little bit of capital in there is, is, was, is our two four-wheelers we buy every year. So this fund is 100% ROT fund, um, so we, but we still try to be very frugal with it because they, they watch it. So what you see here is basically – I flatline that budget other than a pay increase. So does this include the three folks we have walking the beach that write tickets? Yes, sir. It the beach trainers are included in that. And we had increased that last year. That's why that you don't really see that increase in this year's budget. The the hundred thousand is basically everybody getting that bump up in pay, mm -hmm. including the full time position. How how's that? going over is that with the guards for this season are you okay I know you were worried about being able to get them because it's competitive out there so yeah we held our last tryout Sunday for understand we were around we're around 40 to 42 um, guards which is our bare minimum but our challenge this year is a lot of our returning guards are doing internships and some of them have took other jobs um, during the Monday through Friday type thing so we're seeing a lot more part-time this year even though they're part-time seasonal, they're going to be part-time, part-time seasonal. So that's where we're going to struggle. Me and Tony was talking about that Sunday afternoon at the trials that um, that's going to be something we have to watch and we're either going to have to have a core group that really wants to work a lot or we may have to run another round and see. I, you know, I, um, but we, we've struggled the last couple of years because you know restaurants are paying $5 more an hour than what we're paying to sit on the beach all day, which – Sounds like a glorious job, but still, money's money in, in today's world. What's the what's the uh, optimal number of lifeguards? We say forty, but that's all based off how many of them are going to be full time versus part time with us. And so we pull them in the beginning when they when they apply. We ask where they're at. So if we see a lot more part time, that number is more like forty five. So we basically say forty plus in the budget is how we write it up in the book. Uh, if we Ford, if we drop, if we don't have at least forty, it's, it's going to be hard to function on the beach. Forty full time, not guards. full time, but forty guards, and that's based off three quarters of them being full time, half to three quarters. Mm -hmm. It takes it takes twenty five of us roughly to to work our squads and to work 
the beach and then your other part is typically part time that fills in when because you know they're going to take a week off in the summer just like everybody else when they go back to school so we're filling gaps and then of course we go all hands on during Memorial Day and Labor Day so we bring everybody in for uh, I'm sorry for, uh, July 4th and Memorial Day um, well, Labor Day is a little five, bit more manageable. Working five days a week too right so you is that I mean they got to have days off it's right, cool. that's basically the, the rotation of the squads, the, the three yeah. squads. So there's not 40 out there at one No, time. but that's how 40, you're saying this year you're looking at about 40, you're just yeah, on about a, there. On a, on a July 4th week, we've got around 20 stands. We try to sit every stand. We got six four-wheelers, every four-wheeler being serviced, the supervisor being serviced, and then we double sit the boardwalk area. And then anywhere we have a rip, we double sit the rip if we have a bad rip area. What's the uh, going rate? Right. How, how much are we paying? Right now, I think it starts around twelve fifty, and then they there's a what we do is we have a base pay. Mm -hmm. You get a quarter every year you return up to four years, and then we give you uh, the supervisors get fifty cent, and then the head guard gets a dollar more an hour. So it kind of incrementally goes up. So the head guard, if they've been with us four years, mm -hmm. and um, head guard, they, they'll get basically $2 more mm -hmm. per hour. One. Any of your, uh, in the cadre of lifeguards, any retirees on the island, not just, you know, UNCW student during the summer, but um, Some, is somebody who could actually pass muster at the tryouts and might be 52 years old and, you know, like the swim. Are you trying to get a job, Joe? Oh, Joe. No, I'm not. Be, that was, that he, was I'm talking assets. They, that was you know, we have liabilities that would be something else. <laughs> yeah. He's looking for a job. But I, I guess that's another way of saying <laughs> somebody looking for something to do and, you know. Yeah. No, we and we encourage that. We actually, we I don't think we this year, but we've had some school teachers. Right. from some of the schools because they're out for the summer. They'll come work part-time with us. Um, we've had some professors from, like, colleges that come, like UNCW and Cape Fear. I don't know this year. I hadn't, I hadn't really – I made every trial. I don't remember seeing any, um, you know, anybody, you know, that jumps out. Tony Savannah come out and try it out, but he just <laughs> does it every year to show off, you know. No. <laughs> yeah. he, still, he still proves himself he can do it every year, so I don't know why he does that. He, I was thinking Jay, you know, he's retired. Well, Jay can't swim. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a problem. Oh, that? that might be Wait, problematic. you live at the beach it's and you an can't issue. swim. <laughs> it's public now. It's my son who retired. I know it recently. Chief, what hours are we going to operate? So we operate, um, basically the guards come on the beach. Um, they show up at, at uh, 9 to work out, and then 10 they're on the beach. Um, at 10, uh, half the squad comes in. Around midday, we, we're fully staffed around lunch. That carries over to mid-afternoon, and then during the week, we go home at 5 and 7 on the weekends, and then holidays we do. Um, and so, and what we do, it, it, the, during the week, we watch the beach. If we're, if we're rotten, if the tide cycle's pretty strong and we're having a lot of rescues, we keep them on until that calms down. So that's kind of fluid. But 5 during the week is our typically go-home okay. time. Okay. And we're going to start Memorial Day fully staffed, fully Yes. On the beach. Friday, Friday Memorial Day is when the whole squad hits the beach. Right. Any other questions for Chief? Chief, was it Chad that used to fly the drone up and down the beach looking for rips? Because that's a great way to spot a rip by just looking overhead. We had. It was uh, me and Chad uh, were the ones that could fly the drone. Um, we're working on that program again. We're kind of revisit. Tony's looking um, in the – us bringing that program back up we still have the drone um they threw a lot of there's a lot of training that has to go into it and with the faa and it, 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 when they first come out they were just like it was kind of like when there's unwritten we're not going to look at it but they've got pretty strict with it and um and so about you know having it you basically have to pass the pilot license test for like a stand and it's not i don't want to sound like it's that big but it, it, you do have to pass that whole initial written test and then there's some flight time you have to do. But um, we're working on getting several firemen back up to speed on that. Thanks, yeah. Chief. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Bruce, um, you had, uh, we have 
general discussion yeah. next. Did you were you going to give a little? Yeah, give a little quick presentation. Okay. First of all, um, Ed and I were, and I think Eric too, we're, we're going to try out for the lifeguard just to do to test our metal. But Ed and I were former lifeguards a long time ago, so we were going to. I want to come see that. that. But we we forgot missed the tryouts. But but if you have to but if you have to get saved by your own lifeguards, that's not going to look good. good. <laughs> so, um, all right. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Here we are, the second budget workshop. Um, if we go to the budget calendar, I'll sort of give you a rundown where we are. This is the budget workshop to review the, the goals you set earlier this year. So we'll go through and how this proposed budget addresses some of the goals that Council set in your retreat. Um, tonight we'll have the open house at 6 p.m. here, Council Chambers, to answer questions from the public, show them some information. Um, and then next Tuesday night at a regular meeting, we'll review the expense projected expenses and revenues and then have a public hearing for the public comment and then at the May workshop I'll submit the budget message which is required by law to be submitted to you by June and then um, it'll be on your agenda for adoption in June 14th regular meeting um, first of all as you remember council and the retreat set four priorities infrastructure communication quality of life and physical responsibility um, so far, what we've seen the budget we have, I think, addresses all of those in, in several different ways. First, for infrastructure, we've got the $250,000 in there for the um, water engineering report that's required to submit for permits to do water storage um, and to upgrade our system that's required. And we thought it would be best to go now um, so we can get in any funding cycles that come up. So we're going to start that. There's already funded um, Lake Park Retention and Stabilization. Um, we will have a, a more detailed update on that next Tuesday night. So that'll give you that. And then we are seeking grants for wastewater treatment headworks. There's actually no dollars right now in the budget, but we are seeking grants to pay for the headworks. And we feel pretty, pretty good about those opportunities. As far as communication, um, council was clear they, they wanted the town to have better communications and, and wanted me to present some ideas on a public information officer. We've reviewed all over the state different roles um, we don't know if we have the the need for one that just sits there on a, at a podium and answers reported questions but someone who could manage our communications all around from social media to <clears throat> press coordinating things for council coordinating for staff um, helping here in some of the the video and audio, audio and visuals so that's in the budget also um, there's also community room enhancements that we've um, talked about in here put our Navy room that help control make this a, a better we hear the, the complaints on the quality of sound and different things so we'll try to make some improvements there and also includes a remodel of town hall lobby um, we're as you know growing staff wise in this budget but also we need to make some improvements to the lobby that would help the citizen experience too and provide safety for staff so. and we had quality life goals too um, we have pedestrian plan implementations. Some of them, they're ongoing, like the St. Joseph Street you'll be hearing about next Tuesday night, uh, the multi-use path. Um, the ocean sidewalks funded. We're working on that uh, soon. Um, there's folks on the family beach. Being a family a family beach, that was one of your goals in there, quality of life. Um, thanks to Representative Miller and the state budget, we've got money to make some significant improvements to Lake Park, including the Brandy Myers Playground, um, picnic shelter and re, you know revitalizing that area so that's a good thing but we also have in the in the budget at $25,000 to do a parks and rec master plan that will help us plan for the future of the town's recreation physical responsibility I heard that loud and clear during our strategic plan that we wanted to continue to add to the fund balance um, right now in the budget I've got a, a line item transfer and a contingency fund that would present 150,000 to the budget to the fund balance um, it's also there in cases major hurricane or anything that council needs but this would um, go to fund balance and I didn't mean to say the H word sorry yeah, <laughs> we don't say those in here. and um, of course we are in one seeking out grants staff is still working hard on grants we've got several lined up we um, and I'll touch on that in a minute um, on Freeman Park or I may have already passed it but Freeman Park we met with land water grant and it was a very positive experience we took them on site and um, went over there and was a very we felt very optimistic after that it still goes to the trustees but the staff made us feel good on that um, and taxes I think I've heard pretty clear that we want a minimal impact on any taxes and I think we can and I'll show you a snapshot of the budget where we are at this moment 
do this this year without any tax increase. So, next slide, I want to show you um, where we are now and just a little background. Staff is working it's here last night. I'll let you know, usually at five o'clock, it starts to drizzle out at the town hall. There was everybody was scrambling last night, getting final numbers, working on this, getting ready for tonight's meeting, too. Um, so, it was a lot of hard work went in this. But right now, where we are right now, we're a hundred five thousand dollars short on the general fund um, we'll review and look at expenses um, that is attainable to balance budget um, so we'll work that um, where we have an issues is utility fund as you can see we're nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars short there that is m the two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the engineering port comes out of that so you back that out um, most of this is inflationary we are the cost in there have really just skyrocketed in there, but our revenues, our revenues in the general fund, have kept up and done, done remarkably well. Now, we did want to point out something in general fund. Revenues are strong, but there are some one-time expenses in there, including some police grants, and then we're you know taking reserves from Powell Bill funding to to make some pavement projects. And that's a you know hefty sum there that added to that those strong revenue numbers. But those are one-time funds. But utility, on the other hand. The revenues, the rates were set. They didn't keep up with inflation, so we need to either. Um, and, and in this budget, we did do a two percent increase, and it's still nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars short. But it, that's not an inflationary increase. We're going to look whether if there's we need to adjust that, whether we transfer from utility general uh, utility reserves, or we look at stormwater. Some different options when it comes to rates and fees and permits that can help soften that. I don't think we can make up the nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars. Um, but we can soften that and, and limit what we have to transfer from the utility general uh, reserve fund. Some other things in this budget um, that you will see, um, and it will, I think, hand it out. We've got something on here and a little more information on a lot more information by your meeting next week. But the budget uh, financial analyst we talked about, which would assist Debbie uh, doing her, you know, her role as finance officer. She needs help there, but this would also be succession planning for the future, trying to get someone up to speed. There's an HR administrative support position. There would be, you know, a lot of the HR, but it'd be a lot of a flex position. Um, and one thing, and then they got the firefighters, and one thing about these personnel positions that are added, we've had for years since I've been here, a lot of pressure, um, staff wanting more positions. We've fought most things. We did add, a, I think, a position last year for public works for a maintenance repair. But on that, we've been pretty good about holding off on positions. But this year, there was uh, staff convinced, convinced me to include some in the, in the budget, and I think they're needed. Um, there are lots of road paving, as I mentioned earlier, and stormwater projects that will, you know, help a lot in some of our infrastructure issues. Um, there is a, a a boat for the harbor master and the police, but that's going to be funded predominantly through a grant through the Port Authority. We hope. Um, if, if we don't get the grant, we'll have to revisit that. Um, and of course, there's the unified development ordinance that would sync all our ordinances together and give us a chance to review and get up to speed on all our ordinances and see where we need changes. And um, that'd be a big project, but that's funded in this budget. We also have some ongoing projects you're aware of the Florida Avenue utilities and paving. The lining of the pipes is finishing today. So they will be ready. Um, and the bids have gone out for paving. So hopefully, we'll get those back. I know Brian's talked to. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a 10-day bid turnaround. Yeah, so we should be getting some responses back soon on that. The St. Joseph Street, mentioned that earlier, we'll be doing that. We'll have that for you next week and also some uh, some things from the adopted pedestrian plan that we will be bringing to council next week also. Town Marina, as you can see, is under construction. It's going it's going well. It's a big project that we'll be dealing with for a long time, so that's under underway. Mike Chapel Park bathrooms, we got good news on that. That sort of affected this budget a little bit, but we thought the bathroom was going to be delivered in October. We got word it'll be here in June. So we will be, probably won't be open till July, but will be coming to us in June. So we can get that installed and ready to go. So do we know when the demo of the current, uh, we probably don't know that yet. We, uh, the demo of the current one? Okay. Obviously the shorter cycle, the, I, I know it takes time, but to tear it down before you. The long, the less time you have to go without a bathroom, the better off yep. you are. Yep, yep. Um, and Hamlet Ocean Rescue should be by Memorial Day, but any day soon. They're they're moving forward quickly on that. Um, they had still 
I have I need to get a bit on the the garage doors. I was one of the holding last things holding us up. And uh, the ADA Bruce, Bruce on Hamlet. Well, I assume included in that's re, either repaving or sealing or whatever. Yep. To that parking lot and relining it and getting that up and running because right now we're not getting parking from that lot revenue yeah. from that lot. So. Right. That yeah that will be part of it. Um, it will include I believe we, Alan correct me if I'm wrong a four or six golf cart spaces in Hamlet. Uh, six. six yeah so okay. um, golf cart and. Um, the existing bike rack, and I think when they have the bike rack at the at the beach access and some improvements there, so that's moving forward. Um, the ADA transition plan will be will be doing a I forgot the date, but the meeting soon on that. To, that will address some of the handicap spaces, handicap access at different um, access points and places throughout town. So a lot going on, a lot in this budget, and I, um, and we'll staffs all here. So if you got any questions on information you've seen today or previously, we'll try to answer. So the the first slide you had the shortfall the eight hundred thousand dollars did you say that is with a two cent increase or without a two cent that's increase? with it's a the utility fund the utility yeah. fund so that's a two percent rate increase 2%. included in that okay. proposed revenue and that still drops us short so nine hundred eighteen I'm sorry Jay no go ahead, going go ahead. Uh, I was just curious what's the magic number if you just rolled it all into rate increases what's it look like well we we did run um if we brought it to the CPI at 8.6, that would bring an additional 285,000, I believe. So that, so you're looking, short. yeah. So we're a lot short, and you know, utility funds are supposed to. It's an enterprise fund that's supposed to pay, or general fund. You're not expected to pay as you go. It's not equal. Utility fund is. You're supposed to run it as a business that right. produces enough revenue to maintain it and and to put money back. Right now with inflation. We, we're not doing that because of inflationary cost and the, the capital expense. So will you bring us, I guess at some point you're going to bring us how you plan on, I'm just curious about, personal opinion, I encourage you to find, I know you're going to have to make rate increases, but if we can somehow hit the other aspects of that fund yeah. as opposed to, with, uh, as opposed to just base water rate, charges because we we all have heard it's been tough mm -hmm. right because of the bond right. increases that were required um i don't know how to tell you to do it but uh, just yeah. sharpen your pencil and do whatever you can to try to keep those because a, a 10 percent increase is going to be tough for the right for some residents yeah. well the staff understands i think we will i think 10 percent increase will be tough for all residents not just some residents yeah. we just had a tax increase so yeah. We're still talking about raising, 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 raising. So I think we need to look at where this discrepancy, where this 918,000 overage is coming from and figure out how to. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's completely inflationary. We can show you pipe costs are like this, gravel costs like everything. It's, com I mean, that's, I mean, it's almost exactly to the, the percentage out to when you back out the 2.5, I mean, the 250 for the water study. So Historically, have we transferred from general to utility to present a, a balanced we, enterprise account we did last year because of a settlement that we had to do because of the um, um, impact fee lawsuit but no that's not um the enterprise fund is like says post to fund itself um, and that's I, when it well, doesn't there's something wrong and in this year we know what it is it is the inflation inflation went up everything went up 8.6 percent or more but our rates did not so that's why I'm not saying we should raise it. I think this may be the time because inflation, maybe we take some from fund balance, from the utility fund balance to make up the, and hope inflation goes back down and then we'll hopefully be back on track next year. What is our utility fund balance as a percentage, um, roughly? I have to look to Debbie, we're still running that. I know we transferred a million through the audit, was it we had a million in there last year? But did, I thought we had a million, million, yeah, that, that transferred over. Yeah. So last year, we it was a good year on utility fund, but this right. year it's projected not. So, so Bruce, I, I know we have, like you said, increases in all, every aspect of every kind of materials. Right. So when we have, when we have to make road cuts, and I'm going to keep bringing this up right. because it's an issue, when we have road cuts for construction, who pays the burden of filling in those cuts 
with gravel and then asphalt and going back and checking them does that fall on does that fall out of, that come out of our funds or are we somehow recapturing that in our permitting process i think and i'll turn to our utility director but i believe that's in and ed part of our tap fees and system development fees that's all sort of included in there whether it duck captures it completely or not maybe that's something we look at as tap fees and and different um things I mean, like there, that there's a there if you two streets i can think of right off the top of my head goldsboro and monroe right now right. have multiple cuts right and they'll have to be repaired somebody's going to bear the co the cost you know the brunt of that so my i personally think that whoever's building those properties needs to be bearing the brunt of that instead of the taxpayers just personally that's right. my personal thought i think yeah we'll look at those fees because it should be covered but I, it, right now probably not with inflation it probably doesn't cover those either so. okay is there an lgo requirement for fund balance on um utilities fund i'll turn to debbie i do not believe there's an lgc requirement for or excuse me lgc yeah there's not no just the eight percent on your general fund. General fund, which now the LGC I think is recommended. And I just saw some recently that twenty five percent. They've been sending some yeah, communities. They, they did a presentation on that at the oh gosh, what was it meeting I went to? But anyway, the straight tre state treasurer's office, and they said eight percent is a myth. It's yeah. never been eight yeah. percent. Somehow that got repeated. It's twenty five percent. And they may well, actually they the way she pre presented it was they're going to look at your finances and decide whether you're. There is no set number. Yeah, they're they're going to tell you what you should have. I think. And what's we, ours at right now? Ours was at thirty six percent, I believe, in the audit this year. Which it's, it's the first time it was it's been down to as low as I think twenty or twenty five right. or something. Yeah, somewhere. I was encouraged regarding the paving yesterday, and to a certain extent, what uh, Deb was talking about mobilizing for basically about four miles of paving one time mm -hmm. one mobilization to set up and deal with the uh, PCI rated red streets so if we've done a segment of third which has been done near the church uh, Florida Avenue the next shoe to drop ARP ARP funds and then from the Powell bill will come the remaining a uh, little over four miles of, Correct. of paving um, regarding rate increases if we pursue more revenue bonds in a negotiated fashion we may be stuck with that as a condition to get that money right. unless we get something competitive so I think what we're trying to avoid is another hit on yeah. rate increases as a result of the infrastructure that we would have to do and finally on the uh, with the general fund uh, Bruce that the $105,000 Delta is that does that account for the 150 that you're putting back into fund balance Th that's with a line item transfer 150 to fund balance that includes and then we come so absent that really we're looking at something that's pretty close to balance right as correct. presented with everything requested correct Thanks. so I don't want to I think we brushed over that because everyone was, took a big sigh when we when you said we probably at least at your current numbers will not have a tax uh, property tax increase this right. year let's remind ourselves mm -hmm. that this didn't happen by accident right this was council was working on this two years ago this is how we came up with the parking program that we have as and some liked it and some didn't um, but kudos to you and staff for executing that plan and getting us to the point where we potentially may not have a property tax increase this year that was not just an accident mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I think Agreed. you know and, and former counsel you know I mean it, he's not here but kudos to Steve Shuttleworth I think he's probably one of the best financial minds that ever set up here and uh, I know when we came on board he guided us mm -hmm. as to why we needed to make the revenue changes we did so um, just want to thank Steve for his guidance mm -hmm. through that and uh, and uh, that is fantastic news. Um, I don't know what we're going to do on the on the utility side because that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. So I would say, sharpen your pencil and come back and you know with a more detailed explanation of how you can make that up. Um, I think that'd be good. I think you heard that from everybody up here. That's going to be a tough one to swallow. And, and we'll we'll 
have something to you this week so you can review before next and, and we'll publicize it before next the public hearing next Tuesday. But to reiterate, at a nine hundred and eighteen thousand dollar fund shortage, that would be roughly just a ten percent rate increase in general. Yeah, some to, to cover that if that was only uh, yeah, I think at least yeah. Uh, I think that would be I don't think you could cover it in ten percent. Yeah, because two eighty five at eight point six. Yeah, I think we're looking probably more fourteen fifteen percent. I, I think where we're heading is increases are bad. Double digit double digit increases are horrible. Yeah. 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 Right. So somehow we have to figure that out. Right. And and I agree with what Deb said about let's look at all the fees and everything that feeds into that. Let's the easiest thing for us to do is just raise water rates, and I think that's the wrong thing to do. Right. I think we. We probably will have to raise them, but I think we need to look at all aspects of that, yeah. all the fees that come, all the revenue sources that come into them. I, I know you're doing this, but I, I, I think we I think that's the direction councils. I think you felt us all <laughs> tense up when you said <laughs> yeah. 10%. Yeah, percent. Yeah, we just want to throw that out there just to show you what, what the issue is what. Yeah, we, we, we got a pretty under, good understanding of that. Does anybody disagree with what I No, but, but, yeah. but I would, so one thing I would like some clarification on is when, so it looks like every department head uses the same template to do their presentations. Right. Um, some are putting in a total, some are putting in a percentage. I personally would like to see both, yeah. the percentage and the dollar amount, but I would also like to see benefits broken out from payroll because just because you're adding a 10% to the payroll does not mean you're adding 10% to benefits. Right. So I want to see how that equals out. Is that yeah. Do you understand? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you say you're getting a ten percent raise, we're not raising all of your benefits. You're we're raising your right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to see that as a line, as two different line items: benefits versus payroll. I, th I think where Deb's going to highly explain to us in the last meeting, which I think surprises a lot of the public, that a big portion is in benefit mm -hmm. in the benefits mm -hmm. package that's given to the employees and. Which they deserve. I'm not saying, but it it is nice to have that called out. And some are state mandated too. But some yeah, are state a mandated. percentage is one thing. But if you see dollar figures, it really yeah yeah we'll we'll get those changed for trying to have those all updated yeah. tonight with the numbers instead okay. of percentages. All right, thank you. Thanks. Hey Bruce, the last safe round on the lake. Uh, where are we on the resubmitting for a permit to dredge with the core? I'm getting an update this week, and I'll present all that to you Tuesday night. So we'll have a the latest. I have to. Or the project manager see exactly where we are. You know, a minimized project, which I think we've echoed a number of times, site retained, less dredge. If the two million that's restricted for that use covers that, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. We still have one point four million in revenue bonds to address some of Brian's priorities. Yep. That would be a nice touch to the budget as we move forward. Right. But yeah. But I wish it, it, I agree with you. Is if if I think we're all sitting up yeah. here with our fingers crossed that these Lake Dredge numbers come in better yeah. than yeah. they have in the past. Yeah. But and we're, we're optimistic that will be obviously they're not going to be the what, what seven six million or whatever. Yeah, six million. Yeah, it won't be that. So, it's but if we can get under two, that's great. All right, two. I I do have one question on the Mike Chapel uh, bathroom. So we're talking about demo early June, new bathroom July. So in the interim, we're going to have porta potties. I hate to bring up porta potties. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have something. I hate there. to do it. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll get with Parks Rec. We'll work out a plan, uh, whether it's something to address the needs. Lots of kids out there. You can't be without bathrooms. Right. For yeah. Any amount of time. Right. Right. Yeah, we could. We could. We do have the. We do have the the, the Porter Porter John Trail that we could. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. All right, Bruce. Is all that right. all you got? That's it. Yeah. All right. Um, last uh, agenda items. Just general council comments. Anybody? I budget have, or non-budget. I have a presentation. Oh, we got a presentation. Jay, you got one, please? Sure. So this is the official logo for our centennial. Uh, Ryan Cavanaugh, one of our members on the centennial committee, has printed these up. And so this is what our slides will, our slides will look like. This girl front. Is that everybody? You guys want to go up front? Sure, Jasmine needs a picture. We didn't do this work, though. The Centennial Committee did. Share a conference photo with this one. You always update photos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
So, Deb, just while you're on Centennial Committee, uh, man, I've never seen a bunch of citizens embrace something as much as that committee has embraced our Centennial. So, so we are actually it's still a ways away, but wow. We're, st we're actually making a, uh, we're going to be making a presentation next week um, to the MAC Committee um, just to kind of get their feet wet and knowing what we're coming into. So, uh, um, it's been a lot of fun. Now, if Bruce can just get our marina done. Our lake yeah, we need done we have all, all that done before the centennial. <laughs> um, so, here's what I was thinking about last night uh, with inflation. My wife and I talking that you know every dollar you have in a bank today is worth a little bit less tomorrow. So it certainly puts you in the mindset of if you got to buy something, hurry up and buy it. So that's got me thinking about, for instance, like the ocean sidewalk, ocean boulevard sidewalk. And I've not been trying to pester you guys too much about it. I know you got a lot on your plate. But it does make me feel, <clears throat> reminds me of how critical it is to, to get hopping on these things, every one of them, because the money's not going to be worth as much next year. You, I mean, is there any, have you started with that? With selecting a engineer, or what, where are we at? The engineer has not been selected. Our project managers are about up to here right now. I know, but, I know. I, so we're just we're just trying to get, and there I think we see some. You know, now the marina is underway, little space opening up. Um, so that we'll make sure that it's urgent, and and the state's going to make sure we get it done in an appropriate amount of time since it's their funding. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, and but I understand the cost. We need to do it quicker before, if because things. Continue to go up. M yeah. Mike's logic applies to everything else too. Yeah. Water yeah. storage, yeah. right? I mean, I think that's why we all have a sense of urgency on those because I can't tell you the number of times I said, "I wish we'd have bought property 20 years ago. I wish we'd have put, you know, because <laughs> it would have been half the price." But uh, your point is very valid. So the sense of urgency, and I'm not again saying you guys need to. Do, we just constantly need to be pushing these big projects yeah. that we need. I'll try to lay out some more. Our planning stages for that too. So lay up some timelines. That'd be Give good. Heads up. For and, and also on the note of inflation, say for instance um, the St. Joe project. It's an eighty twenty grant. Okay. If inflation is so terrible that you know it, it's an eighty twenty grant based on a cost estimate, but that's based on the cost of in twenty. 19 I think was when that application started is there a process or a, a possibility of renegotiating like hey we'd still do a 2080 mix but can they change the overall value is that possible that at all on the table I think it's doesn't hurt to ask so we can see if we can meet with the um with DOT and MPO and to see how we can adjust those numbers see if we can what elements value engineer because every time we talk to folks from the MPO they talk about all these projects out there that nobody's really coming to the table to to do and we've often heard that hey you know Carolina Beach is pretty good you actually are pursuing some of these mm -hmm. projects and like we have all this money on the table but nobody's pursuing these projects well here we are pursuing it but it's going to go presumably above the initial cost estimate. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway. uh, um, well uh, with my meeting with MPO, I mean with NCDOT, two month or before the council meeting Monday, we maybe we can get some things, and I will do a, an update to council what I hear from NCDOT on Monday, so we can. They have that nine hundred thousand for ocean is part will be rolled into Powell Bill funding, no, or is that a separate line? I understand the money for paving CBA North will be rolled into Powell Powell Bill, Bill, but this is we've actually got the money in the bank for it for Ocean right now. And you did right. answer that RFI regarding getting an engineer to scope it. Right, you, right. You know, it's a set amount. Maybe that just impacts the length. Right. From basically the crosswalk to how far into the Wilmington Beach. Right. Yeah, because yeah, that was based also based on last year's numbers to estimates. But I think they did give us some cushion in that, though. Just I, I mean. I think we also need to look at um, the money that's sitting out there for Clarendon. If we're not going to do Clarendon, I think we need to release that back to the WMPO because we can't move it from one project to the other, from what I'm told. Right. Right. 
But if Clarington's not going to be a project we're going to do, then I don't know why we keep right. sitting there holding on to we, that. Yeah, we'll take direction from council, but uh, we had talked about maybe leaving and maybe revising that project to more of a sidewalk or something at some point instead of a okay. multi-use path. So. First I heard that, but okay. Well, that was just internal discussion staff. We thought about maybe bringing it back. I think that was okay. Leanne had. Yeah, so. Okay. I mean, it was thrown out there, but not really. Yeah. No, it never was. It still sits on the MPO list. But I, I know it's on the yeah. MPO list, but. Um, they don't seem to. I forget. I, I don't remember the exact number. Do you remember? It's not as much as you think. Was? It was well over $100,000 yeah. out of our pocket. I was. It was 140 It was 600 It was a matchment. Right. Six, I don't know. Yeah. I remember it was. Doctor for my time, I forgot what it was. Mm -hmm. Any other general comments from council? Just one last. Uh, Pivot last week briefed 73 additional spots, and I, I understood that from our side to be 105 commissioned new spaces. Are a few of them not yet in the 32? I think there may be a few that are not, and a few that we did that we end up having to go back and not maybe change some okay. that cause issues. And can we get some clarification too on how they got the, the 218 average because I've ran those numbers every which way you can and cannot get 218 as the average per space. I've got I've got two separate issues. One is uh, I know we talked at one time about possibly getting the new colonel from Matsu down here to Carolina Beach. I think the sooner that happens. I know he I'm sure he has a lot going on his plate with what's going on in the world, but it would be great to get him down here so we can create those relationships. Um, plus, with the plan, the Parks and Recs plan, um, they would like to implement some Matsu property in the plan. So it would be great if we can get him down here for a bar run. <laughs> uh, the other thing is I heard about heard last night so volunteer passes people that come in and want to help for the fireworks and such parking wise do we have a program or process for volunteers we've been granting volunteer passes at, you know requested based on you know what the request is for volunteer <coughs> passes and we can we, we, staff has been working on a way to handle for fireworks and other activities and since so w w would that be the hanging tag or would that be what we we've have the ability to go in the system and key in a plate for a day. Yeah, I, I have to ask Pivot how that works. What we've been doing, they've done a little laminated placard that sits on your dash that says right. volunteer, but um, but I, I'm assuming it has something to do with lights plate or something because they're doing the LPR reader. But um, yeah. I did ask uh, the chamber about how they were doing the Beach Music Festival, and they actually have a shuttle. They have their volunteers park somewhere i don't know where and then they shuttle them but i do know from one event that i was in that they gave me hang tags or placards just mm -hmm. gotcha so i i think the message there bruce though is for the nonprofits that may be doing those things they need to give i even think it says it somewhere on our website that they need to come to you and let you know what the need is discuss that and then you guys will work it out right yeah on i case think by case basis, for is that right yeah, for temporary passes, yeah, for anything beyond yeah, temporary, they need to come to council. But, right, um, but for yeah, 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 they do that. And we've worked with several beach cleanups this <coughs> year. We've gotten passes, and, you know, we'll figure out how, just th what's the best way to do it. We're, since it's a new, we used to do hang tags, um, but we've been trying these placards at the suggestion of the parking company, but we may need to revisit that. Anything else? I have <coughs> one more thing. So, um, and I, you know, I'll preface this with I know that no place is quite like Carolina Beach. But when you're out there looking at other communities for comparison, who are you looking at? Because uh, we are unique. But, of course, we look at Oak Island, the, some of the Outer Banks beaches. Um, you know, we are one of the few that provide have a – you don't have to leave the island. Most beach towns, communities, you got to leave the island to, or leave the beach to go – get all your services you don't have to here Oak Island, I don't think you have to I think probably Nags Head and Kitty Hawk or other ones you don't have to um, so that's the ones we usually look, look toward and maybe uh, Mineral Dollar Atlantic Beach and that surrounding area so when I was doing a, my research Leland kept popping up yeah, in my, yeah. you know because there were similar budget size yeah but you do not look to them 
Well, we do on a lot of things. I mean, they're they're leading the way on a lot of things because they're growing, but they're growing so fast and they are different. They don't they contract for their water and sewer. That you know they're part of the um, uh, sewer authority, water and sewer authority. So, um, but yeah, we do look they we look to them for ideas a lot because they have got a, um, a pretty a progressive um, administration over there and how they handle things. So we do turn to them. But it's a it's hard to compare us how we operate because they're a solid whatever their population is is solid that's there at 8 in the morning and at, at 8 p.m at night where ours fluctuates mm. day to day week you know for the weekends are this much and then <coughs> we're probably bigger than than they are during the summer but you know during the winter we're not so it's a little hard to and that's why I, I was trying to find what our relative population here is here i think the two biggest mistakes people make with Carolina Beach is they either assume we're bigger than we are or we assume that we're smaller than we are. And so here we are with 6,500 people. But when I look at our budget, it's comparable to Leland, which I think is in the 20,000s, or I think Apex and some different communities around the, neighborhood, or around the state. They're in the like 30,000 range. Right. How so, many? so I'm trying to come up to me, come up with what is appropriate for Carolina Beach for staffing. And compared to these other communities. Uh, it's tough. Bruce and I had it's for just walking in, we're having this very conversation about how big is Carolina Beach. There is probably no Saturday ever that there's only sixty five hundred people on this island, right? So what is I thought the there's any day. There's yeah, any day. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Right? Because you have so many transients, people who are half the year and you know, second homeowners. Hey, you were one of those people for a lot of years. Yeah, and and so what number do you use I don't think we have one but your point's valid is what is how do you compare us it's it, tough it'll take a statistical <laughs> expert to come up with the this because yeah like I said 6500 as we mentioned earlier it'd have to be a category one hurricane I feel like the only time there's a 6500 here because um, there's always as you all know you see the rental there's even in the dead of winter there's rental units being used and there's a lot of um, People have second homes and call this their second home, but they spend most of their time here. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would guess that we're if the population was completely accurate, but how many people are here on a day to day basis? Ten thousand, and then it swells, you know, in the twenty plus in the summer months. But so it's and and those numbers are also hard. Like I said, Leland doesn't have the the, the water sewer infrastructure we have to deal with. I feel like ten is probably a minimum. Yeah, I, I agree. You're I think right. you're exactly right. Think, yeah. <laughs> Anything else from council? I just had one last thing. If uh, just wanted to uh, reach out to Joe in the last <laughs> meeting, we, we get together and we argue and we will argue about stuff and it's it's just relation. We all do it with each other. But I, I in the last council meeting we were going over um, the porta potties. I probably got a little too <laughs> too aggressive. But anyway, I just wanted to say I did notice it and. Uh, I know that you and I argue like that all the time, and it's all positive, but I just didn't want to bring that into here. So I just wanted to apologize for that. That's all I got. I oh. do, to, to, Mike, to Mike's uh, question about um, comparisons, um, I do have a little bit of research on comparisons with different beach towns and that kind of thing. And one of the, um, one of the things that I noticed, and I'll, I'll share this with you, I'll send it to you guys in an email. Um, most of the beach towns, our averages are about the same of population population to the number of employees but our numbers are much higher than even some higher than like the city of Wilmington just because of the difference of that's a big city of course right or Leland um, but I'll share those numbers with you because it's, it's interesting to look at it That'd be good. okay and thanks Lynn Conte for getting those numbers for me <laughs> so all right research my HR person. So we'll take researching where we get it. No, no hugs, guys. All right. <laughs> Before I adjourn. Oh, wait, wait. Didn't Bruce? Didn't Bruce? Bruce, didn't you say we're going to give us an update on the grant stuff for Freeman Park, or did I misunderstand? Uh, I was. I was just saying we met. We met with um, somebody from Land Water Grant. We took them on site, toured um, Freeman Park, and got to go up and get bit by a lot of flies and get stuck by a lot of cactuses. Um, but um, cacti. But it was really good positive. He gave us some feedback, and he thinks it's good. He said, you know, the trustees will vote 
to whether to do it. And he goes, I can't say you'll get the $4 million or you'll get $2 million or nothing. But he felt very optimistic. He did make some suggestions. Um, we're talking about different things. Should we do this? Should we do that? And he goes, don't do anything till September. He said, just don't do anything to Freeman Park till September till you hear from us. And then you can do whatever. Whatever and whatever they they'll make an offer. Here's the grant. Here's the stipulations. Right. But then well, I assume that means don't do anything permanent. He said, don't do anything. But he was like he said, don't <laughs> don't combine the properties. Don't. Oh, we're okay. Oh, okay. I said, well, that's permanent. Yeah. Well, well yeah, yeah. Static with what we have today. Yeah. Like, we're, he we're, said we're, anything yeah. that while they're reviewing this thing. Yeah. That, but so. I'm, I can understand that. But so that was his. Okay. I hope everybody comes out at six o'clock tonight. Has a question about the budget. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but are we going to get presentation spreadsheets, anything propped here? And I mean, is it a standard we were, format? We were going to run it sort of like we did last year. We had each department sort of set up. Okay. Um, people come by and they'll have their budget. They may have a, like Brian will probably have the street map with paving. Yeah, um, like that. That's things like that. And you can walk you around and ask each department questions. Um, and there is no agenda, right? It's a walk through, open house. Drop in. Uh, yeah, questions. Right. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I think it. that works better. Yeah. Okay. Isn't everybody going to be at the uh, Ashley women's lacrosse playoff game tonight? Oh, I forgot about that. I'll go with you, Mike. Mike, okay. Mike, Mike <laughs> Just making sure everybody's aware. Yeah. They play well, Hoggard you, you tonight at face, 5 o'clock. You can FaceTime me during the game, and I'll listen to you. All right, this meeting is deteriorating <laughs> fast. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Appreciate it.